Welcome back, my friends. Thank you for joining me today and joining every day. Thank you for that, my friends, my fans, my followers. Hope you're all doing great and we are beginning. So let's go. After the show, the booking agents signed blank checks and pressed fountain pans upon heart and cherry. $500 a week was what it panned out. Pan it out. That night at 12, sorry, 11.30, Bob Hart took off his hat and ba Betty, 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 Cherry good night at her boarding house door. Mr. Hart said she thoughtfully. Hmm. Come inside just a few minutes. We got our chance, chance now to make good and to make money. What we want to do is to cut expenses every cent we can and save all we can. Right, said Bob, it's business with me. You've got your scheme for banking yours. And I dream every night of that bungalow with the Jap cook and nobody around to raise, to raise trouble. Anything to enlarge the net receipts will, en and will engage my attention. Anything to enlarge the net receipts will receipts will engage my attention. Come inside just a few minutes, repeated Cherry, deeply thoughtful. Thoughtful. I've got a proposition to make to you that will reduce our expenses a lot and help you work out your own f future and help me work out mine and all on business principles. Might will pay had a tremendously successful run in New York for 10 weeks. Rather neat for a water while sketch. And then it started started on the circuit cir circuits. Without following it, it may be said that it was a solid drawing card for two years without a sign of abated, abated, abated popularity. Sam Packard, manager of one of Keter's New York houses, said of Hard and Cherry, as square and high-toned a little team as ever came over the circuit. circuit. It's a pleasure to read their names on the booking list. Quiet, hard workers, no Johnny and Mabel nonsense, on the job to a minute, to the minute, straight home after their, their act, and each of them as gentle man-like, gentle man-like, gentle man-like, one word, as a lady. I don't expect to handle any attraction, attractions that give me less trouble or more respect for this profession. And now, after so much cracking of a nutshell, here's the kernel of the story. At the end, at the end of its second season, Mice Will Pay came back to New York for another run at the roof gardens and summer theaters. There was never any trouble in booking booking it and the top-notch price. Bob Hart had his bungalow nearly paid for and Cherry had so many seven de sevens deposit bank books that she had begun to buy begun to buy sectional bookcases 
on the installment plan to hold them. I tell you the things to assure you, even if you can't believe it, that many, very many of the, of the stage people are workers without abiding, abiding ambitions. Just the same as the man who wants to be president or the grocery, grocery clerk who wants to wants a home in a flat bush or a lady who's anxious to flop out the flop out flop out of the count pan into the brain's fire and I hope I may be allowed to say without chipping into the contribution basket that they often move in in a mysterious way they they wonders to perform perform but listen at the first performance of mice will pay in new york at the new west westphalia no no hams alluded to alluded to alluded to theater Viona cherry was nervous when she fired at the photograph of the Easter, Eastern beauty on the mantle, the bullet, instead of penetrating the photo and then striking the disc, went into the lower left side of Bob Hart's neck. Not expecting to get in there, Hart collapsed neatly. With while Cherry, while Cherry fainted in a most artistic manner. The most artistic manner. In the most artistic manner, the audience sir sir missing sir missing that I viewed a comedy instead of a tragedy in, in which the principles were married or recon, reconciled, reconciled, applauded with, a great, with, a, with, with great enjoyment. The cool head who always graces such occasions rang the curtain down, cur rang the curtain down. And two platoons, platoons, platoon, of scene shifters, respectively and more or less respectively, removed heart and cherry from the stage. The next turn went on, and all went as merry as an alimony bell. Alimony bell. The stage hands found a young doctor. At the stage entrance, who was waiting for a patient with a de decoction, decoction of M. With the roses, the doctor examined heart carefully. And laughed heartily. No headlines for you. Old Sports was his diagnosis. If it had been two inches to the left, it would would have undetermined the carotid artery, carotid, carotid artery as far as the red front drugstore in Flatbush and back again carotid artery artery carotid artery who knows what is this uh, as it is you just get the property man to bind it up with the flounce, flounce, torn, flounce torn, torn, from any one of the girls 
Walen Sines Walen Sines and go home and get it dressed by any of the girls sorry and go home and get it dressed by the parlor floor practitioner on your block and you'll be right you'll be all right excuse me I've got a serious case outside to look after after that after that Bob Hart looked up and felt better and then to where he lay came Vincent the Trump juggler great in his line Vincent a solemn man from Brattleboro Brattleboro with T named Sam Griggs at home sand toys and maple sugar maple sugar was the kind of sugar maple sugar maple sugar home to two small daughters from every town he played when sand had moved on the same cir circuits circuits with heart and cherry and was their prepatetic friend prepatetic prepatetic bob said vincent in his serious way i'm glad it's no worse the little lady is well about you who has heard cherry said the juggler we didn't know how bad you were hurt and we kept her away it's taken the manager and three girls to hold her it was an accident of course at heart cherry's all right she wasn't feeling in good trim or she couldn't have done it there is no hard feelings she is strictly business the doctor says it'll i'll be on the job again in three days don't let her worry man said sam griggs severally 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 puckering his old smooth puckering his old smooth line faced are you a chess automation or a human pen cushion pin cushion pin cushion pin cushion cherry is crying cherry is crying her heart out of you calling bob bob every second with them holding her hands and keeping her from coming to you what's the matter with her as heart with wide open eyes the sketch will go on again in three days i'm not hurt bad the doctor says she won't lose out of half a week's salary i don't know i i know it was an accident what's the matter with her you seem to be blind or a sort of a fool said Winston. the girl loves you and is almost mad about your heart what's the matter with you is she nothing to you i wish you could hear her call you loves me asked bobhart rising from the stack of scenery scenery on which he lay cherry loves me why it's impossible i wish you could see her and hear her said greggs but man said burphart sitting up it's impossible it's impossible i'll tell you i never dreamed of such a thing no human being said the tram juggler could mistake it she's wild for love of you 
how have you been so blind? But my God, said Bob Hart, rising to his feet. It's too late. It's too late. I tell you, Sam, it's too late. It can be. You must be wrong. It's impossible. There is some mistake. She's crying for you, said the charm dragon. For love of you, she's fighting the tree and calling your name so loud. They don't dare to raise the curtain. Wake up, man. For love of me, said Bob Hart with staring eyes. Don't I tell you it's too late. It's too late, man. Why? Why? Cherry and I have been married two years. Okay, that was unexpected, but yeah, another another great story by O. Henry. So thank you guys for listening to me today and see you tomorrow on the next story. Bye.